Range and zones are used to define the environment in combat. Each is a measurement of distance, but they're used in different ways. In this video, we're going to break it down. Greetings Vault Dwellers and welcome to the Wasteland. This is your Overseer speaking, Three-Eyed Townie, and today we're going to be taking a look at distance, range, and zones for combat in Fallout the role-playing game by Modifius. This video is a continuation of a Learn to Play series that I'm putting together for the game. In previous videos I've gone over the basics, so if you haven't checked those out yet, you might want to take a look. We've talked about range in a previous video, but let's do a quick recap. There are five different categories of range. There's reach, which is something within arm's length. There's close, which is anything in the same zone as you. There's medium, which is anything in the adjacent zone. There's long, which is two zones away. And extreme, which is three zones away. Range is a relatively defined measurement, and it's determined by how the zones are laid out. Now, zones are a little more ambiguous depending on the setting. They're not a fixed size, and they're defined by the environment. The area combat takes place will be divided into these zones based on the terrain. For example, a set of stairs could be separating one zone from the next, or maybe the players find themselves in a long hallway with rooms branching off of it. The hallway and each individual room could be considered separate zones. The benefit to measuring distance in this way is that combat encounters can become more fluid and driven by the narrative. Rather than breaking the action to count up 5 foot squares, a player can quickly scan the area, determine where they want to move and what actions required to get there. Using the movement minor action enables the character to travel into an adjacent zone within reach of any object or thing inside it. The sprint action allows your character to travel up to two zones so long as each zone is touching one another, and you account for any hazards or obstacles along the way. I talked about obstacles and hazards in my last video, discussing how action points are required based on the type of obstacle or hazard it is. If you need a refresher on that, feel free to look up that video too. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have an area consisting of two zones, an upper level with visibility onto the lower level. The zones overlook one another, so a character could use a ranged weapon to attack an enemy in the adjacent zone since they have line of sight. A character could also spend action points to climb the ladder and use a movement minor action to travel into the adjacent zone as well. Let's look at another example. This area is a bit more complex and is broken down into several different zones. As you can see from the coloration, the zones have been broken up by obstacles. Ladders, stairs, and gaps all act as natural dividers between each zone. Some zones have line of sight with one another, while others are blocked by walls and other pieces of the environment. A character would need to spend action points to climb any ladders, go up the stairs, or jump a gap, while also using the move or sprint action. As you can see in this example, some zones can be very small, such as the tiny platform on the lower level, only accessible by a ladder, whereas other zones can span for an entire floor, so long as there's no obstacles creating some kind of dramatic separation. If you're new to zones or coming from a different system that used movement speeds and measured distances, this all could take some getting used to. The key thing to remember is that the 2D20 system was designed to emphasize narrative-driven gameplay. Use these elements of the environment to describe how you get from one zone to the next. When you start thinking about the how, instead of measuring out distances, it'll start to feel more natural and make more sense. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you found this breakdown helpful. As you probably already know, this video is a continuation of a Learn to Play series, and we have so much more to cover. If you don't want to miss when the next video is coming out, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. You can find me and the rest of the Fallout 2D20 unofficial fan community everywhere on the internet. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, and we have a very active Discord community as well. And I'll leave a link for all that in the description. And if you haven't already pre-ordered Fallout the role-playing game by Modifius, you can do so directly from their online shop. And I'll leave a link for that in the description too. Thanks again for watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and of course, I'll see you in the wasteland.